want to start by saying congrats on the movie. You did a great job. Thank you. You did a great job. Thanks. Um, and I'm done. I'm out. Okay. That's all I have. <laughs> okay. um, there's, a, there's so much I want to talk about, but I think the one thing that uh, would be easiest for the two of you together is filming the battle, the big battle scene in the third act. Mm. It was, it looked like the armor was real heavy, noisy. It looked like it might have been a really, really tough shoot. Um, was it tough? I think David could speak to it better than I could, but it was. It was. And, uh, and maybe I could, while I was going through it, so maybe I could speak better to yeah, it. Yeah. No, but it was... Uh, it was hot, it was muddy, and um, and I think it was important to David that we weren't going for like a Jedi fight sequence. It was not uh, a swords and horses movie in the sense that there was gonna be some sequence rattled off that was reminiscent of a video game or Mortal Kombat or something, but rather that you felt the claustrophobia of the armor, the claustrophobia of the period, the idea, or the fact rather that more people died in Agincourt from drowning than from blunt force trauma or from stab wounds, and just from general exhaustion. So I think that was the goal of it as opposed to you know, in a lot of these kinds of movies, you see uh, you see the Jedi type sequence that's you know choreographed well in advance. Yeah, and it felt it felt chaotic and hysterical, and it was really hard. And you know, one of the things I really love about that battle sequence is the stuff that was frightening us on the day. You know, which was like Timmy's in the middle of that stuff, and we were having to worry about not killing him. You know, because <laughs> it was it was dangerous. Yeah, yeah it's scary. Yeah, but you threw yourself in. It was good, yeah. and you lived. We still, had, <laughs> we still had stuff to shoot, so I was like, I yeah. didn't really care about you. I just, we <laughs> still to had get stuff your movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things I want to talk about is uh, in, in, in all in before every big battle, the leader usually gives a speech, mm. and I'm curious what it was like for you mm. getting ready. You're looking at all these troops, and you really are on horseback, or I mean, not on horseback, but you have to give that speech. No, and it starts on horseback. It does. I was, yeah. I was right. Um, so talk a little bit about that, and also as uh, like a co, you know, writing. What is it like to write those words to try to inspire this big group of men to possibly give their lives? I think one of the great gifts of this role is that if you're playing someone who's finding their voice, you don't, in fact, I think from an acting perspective, you don't want to modulate that. You don't want to, you don't want to chart that. I had the, the gift of the organic experience of trying to find that voice of that character too, and so that it finds its peak or its, its truest uh, moment of searching in that speech, I think, and to that point, you know, the, there's a, I don't want to give it away, but there's a scene with Falstaff, we can say the night before, where it's alluded to that if there isn't an organic sense to the speech, at least give, a mag, a, uh, at least give the troops a magnificent lie because, uh, you know, they, they deserve it. And uh, as the leader, that's what you owe them. And so I felt like, I felt like the anti-Braveheart in that way, in that, uh, and anyway, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not carrying weight like Mel Gibson or anything. So um, it felt like, you know, a room, the, the, the room to have a speech that is as much about nationalism and as much about riling up an army with a genuine intent and as much as it is, as, in as much as it was about smoke and mirrors and uh, smoke and mirrors of nationalism. Yeah, in a practical sense, this is just a testament to like Timmy's skill and, and his talent. It's like, that's a big speech and it's powerfully delivered and everything. And it's like, you know, we did it like 15, 20 times. Any, a less experienced actor would have lost their voice after two goes, but you know, it's like, it's, you are in there every time, doing it big, and uh, so yeah, good on you. <laughs> <laughs>